I'm going to ask you to stop the video and have a go at this exercise. The graph you have in the screen is the, um, the reaction rates of the hydrolysis of aspirin. And um, aspirin is called, well, the, the technical name of aspirin is acetyl salicylic acid. I'm going to draw it here at the bottom so you have an idea of how to, it looks like. And acetyl salicylic acid in the absence of stabilizers, can hydrolyze in water and it produces um, salicylic acid, which is this compound here. And acetic acid. And this is how acetic acid looks like. Um, the purple line is the aspirin, as you can see, is the reagent. It, it, it hydrolyzes over time. The, here we've got 300 hours. And salicylic acid that gets created over time. Um, and the question is, what is the average rate over the first uh, 50 hours uh, of, um, of this reaction? So what is the rate, the average rate, over the first 50 hours um, uh, time period? And I want to ask you mm, to calculate it both with respect to the aspirin, so the reactant, and with respect to the salicylic acid, so the product. So stop the video now, please. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate it with respect to salicylic acid, because I can see that the numbers are easier. So I find the rate with respect to salicylic acid would be um, the final concentration of salicylic, uh, salicylic acid uh, at 50 hours, um, 1, 10 to the minus 3, minus the initial concentration, uh, which is 0. Um, so 1, 10 to the, min the minus 3, and that divided by 50, which is the time period. And well, if I do this calculation, it's 2, 10 to the minus 5 uh, moles per uh, molarity, uh, moles per liter per, per hour. And now, if I calculate it with respect to the aspirin, then I need to put a minus sign because it's the reagent. And I go and find the product. It's a bit more difficult to calculate because the numbers don't, don't work as well as with the, um, as, as with the salicylic acid that starts at zero. But if I look at it, I think, well, I mean, initially I have roughly somewhere between five and six, 5.5, 10 to the minus three. And after 10 hours, after 50 hours, sorry, I've got somewhere here, again, somewhere between four and five, and I'm going to select 4.5, 10 to the minus three, divided by 50. And again, it's the same number. Um, and it has to be, it has to be the same rate because um, um, the, the product will form as fast as the reagent is lost. So that's when I started with the rate of the salicylic acid because the numbers were easier to calculate because of how this graph was, uh, the, the way the, um, the, um, the axis in this graph worked. But this is, well, this is important. It's something that is worth keeping in mind. Uh, uh, the rate a compound is formed um, has to be the same as the rate in which the reagent is, is uh, reacting. So those both rates are the same. It doesn't matter if you prefer to calculate it with respect to the reagent or with respect to the product. And in this case, for, for this particular case, it was easier to see the numbers on the scale uh, if we took to the product, salicylic acid. So what factors affect reaction rates? Well, there are quite a few things. The first one is the concentration of the reactants. Um, for two, for two reactants, or for several reactants to react, uh, you need to have sufficient, they need to collide, they need to, 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 to enter in contact with each other. Uh, and when those collisions happen, then the, the bonds between the reactants are, are um, within the, each reactant are broken and new bonds are formed. So um, you need collisions and you need what we call effective collisions. They have to collide in the right way with the two atoms that are going to make a bond, uh, you know, colliding with each other. So if you have more reagents, if you have more reactants, then it's more likely they will collide and it's more likely that some of those collisions will be effective. So concentration is one, one aspect. And that is why in many cases reactions tend to slow down after a period of time because you have less and less reactant, therefore you have fewer effective collisions. 
Another, um, an another factor affects reaction rate is temperature. In general, well, temperature helps um, a reaction rate, makes reactions go faster, because um, you are communicating kinetic energy to your molecules by heating them up, and then the molecules will move faster, and they are more likely to collide, and they are more likely to collide effectively. The final step that affects the reaction rate and makes our reaction go faster is the presence of a catalyst. And what a catalyst does, and I will do, um, uh, we will talk more about it in a, in a different, you know, in future videos, is it provides um, an alternative pathway for those reagents to, to react. And, um, and the presence of a catalyst is a way that you have of speeding up a reaction. Because although, yes, temperature can help um, speed up a reaction, and I think uh, it's, the, the, the rule of thumb, give or take, is uh, for each 10 degrees the temperature increases, <clears throat> the, the reaction rate doubles. You not always can play with, uh, with the temperature, uh, because, for example, your reagents might be unstable if, uh, apart, uh, from certain temperatures. Uh, if you think of, for example, um, biological reactions that happen at, at body temperature, there's no increase in, in temperature, so that, that's not an option. Um, you can play with the concentration of reactants. If you put more reactants, the reaction will, will go faster because there will be more collisions. But you can also play with the presence of a catalyst. And more about that in a future slide.